Aldous Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, play against the Catalan system. One of the best ways to play with white. Bishop e2, what a move from Carlsen. Now, what's the point of this move? You attack the rook and the knight, the rook moves, and then take, take an f6. Here's the pawn break. So what's happened here? White has two pawns for the minor piece. Carlsen, he's not just going to sit back and wait. Bishop takes h4. He also sacrifices. Both sides have sacrificed a minor piece in this game. That's pretty cool. So really what's happened? Queen for a rook and two bishops, but black has lots of pawns. What a material imbalance. Very strange situation. The FIDE World Cup is underway. In this video, I'm going to focus on the game between Radoslav Wojtaszek. 44 years old, Polish number two versus Magnus Carlsen. Wojtaszek has white, Carlsen has black, so we're going to see how he plays against the Catalan. Now, what is the Catalan? d4, knight f6, c4, e6, g3 or knight f3, doesn't matter, d5. Bishop g2, bishop e7, and after knight f3, castle, castle, when we look at this setup, this is one of the most popular ways white can play. d4, c4, knight f3, bishop g2, and castle. There are many ways for black to play against this setup. You can play c6. You can take even b6, but today Carlsen decided to surprise his opponent with a5. Not the most popular move. Queen c2, typical move in the Catalan. You put your queen on c2 to defend c4, but also prepare e4, because you need to get pawn breaks in order to free your pieces. Queen c2, c6, we get a triangle center. Very solid way for black to play. Knight d2, also hinting at e4. Also, the knight supports the c4 pawn. So knight d2, typical, good move. b6, and now e4. So it looks like, well, white setup looks very impressive. You get three pawns in the center. You've got more space, but black is defending his center. Bishop b7 played. Now, one question. You might be asking, why not bishop a6? Black can play b3. It's a totally different game. The real idea is coming up very soon because Magnus, he decided to go bishop b7 and after rook d1, knight a6. This move has two ideas. It can come to b4 to attack the queen, gaining time, which we're going to see in the game. But the other idea is c5, but also preparing rook c8. So then the rook actually faces the queen. If you play a3, black can actually play c5 and there's a lot of central tension. White played e5, getting space, the knight retreats. Taking on d5 and Magnus actually plays knight b4 first, gaining a tempo on the queen. The queen has to go back to b1 and now taking with a pawn. Lots of arrows, let me explain. This central pawn controls the light squares. This bishop can come out to control this diagonal and this knight is controlling d3 and c2. White needs to get his pieces out, so knight f1. So then this bishop can come out. Bishop a6. Knight e3. White controls the c2 square. Black also controls it. So really, how has Magnus Carlsen played it so far? He's allowed white to get space, get the center with his three pawns. He's allowed white to get even more space with e5. But as a result, if we look at the queen side, Magnus has got all his pieces out on this side of the board. Knight, bishop, rook. And the funny thing is, white still has all of his pieces at home. But after rook c8, this knight is dangerous, so white played a3, and now knight back to c6. It's pretty cool, actually, this journey. This knight went from b8 to a6. It went to b4, now it's being kicked back. Now, from this spot, we have this knight also putting pressure in the center. Black needs to freeze position with f6, but it's about timing this pawn break. So Carlsen, he is patiently waiting. Knight c6, b3, good move from white controlling all these squares. Also, this rook can actually come along the second rank. So bear that in mind for later. b5, getting more space. h4, typical move in these structures. Really, you see every top player playing this move. The idea is to control the square. This bishop can also come out to g5 later. b4, getting space. a4, lock it down. And now bishop e2. So imagine if this rook was here, then bishop e2 wasn't possible. 
Bishop e2, what a move from Carlsen. Now, what's the point of this move? You attack the rook and the knight, the rook moves, and then take, take an f6. Here's the pawn break. If the fr opens up, this rook will attack the bishop. Bishop g4, you attack the weakness. That's why Carlsen was waiting. When is it the right time to actually play this pawn break? Because when you play a move like f6, the e6 pawn is now weak. But after bishop g4, black now played f5. Let's look at the times. 42 minutes for white, 25 minutes for black. Note, both sides started with one hour and a half on the clock, plus 30 seconds per move. f5 played. Now, if you retreat the bishop to h3 or to f3, black can come in with f4. Bishop f3 is really bad, f4. You're just crashing through. Bishop h3 actually leads to an idea we're going to see in the game anyway. But Wojtaszek is not having this. He's got to take some initiative or else I think he's getting walked over. f5. Knight takes f5. Take, take. So what's happened here? White has two pawns for the minor piece. Carlsen, he's not just going to sit back and wait. Bishop takes h4. He also sacrifices. Both sides have sacrificed a minor piece in this game. That's pretty cool. White accepts the sacrifice. And queen takes h4. By the way... Even though queen takes h4 happened in the game, I want to look at a brilliant move. Knight takes e5. So let's spend about a minute or so looking at this complex variation. So if you take, take, there are so many threats for black. And black might be winning all of a sudden. Knight f3 check is very dangerous. Queen h4 is coming next. Rook takes bishop could be an idea in the future bear that in mind maybe a deflection idea so then the queen is not defending this bishop so many ideas for black check always a useful move just to throw the king in the corner and now if you take this is losing because after this white's bishop is actually stronger than black's rook there are too many entry squares for black rook d3 queen f5 what a move queen f5 because you're actually coming in to f2. And there's no good way to stop it. Black is also threatening just to get his material back. In this position, black is actually a rook down. There's no good way to defend both. Let's go back. If rook takes d5, queen f6, it's over. Double attack on the bishop and the pawn. There's no way out. If bishop f5, just to get some material off, this is the deflection idea I was talking about a few moves earlier. Rook takes c1. Take, take. Now you've got knight f3 check. Also queen g4, queen h3. Not to mention at the moment you've got queen f2 check. Who cares? You've got a rook for a knight. You are an exchange up. Who cares? It's not in the game. Queen c5. Pinning along the fifth rank. But knight f3 check. Doesn't matter. Check. Rook e8. What a finish. And queen g1 is mate. That's how dangerous this was. Queen takes h4 played. Check. King h8. And now queen d3. Queen coming to the defense along the third rank. But knight takes e5. So Carlson, he does throw this move in. But it's a little bit different now because white's queen is now in the game. Take, take. Queen takes d5. Now knight f3 check. This is almost mate. So white, he has to give up the queen for the knight. If you play king f1, it's over. Check. King can only go to the green circle. King can only go to e2. Check again. All squares covered. King can only go to d3, and then it is mate in one from the rook. Rook c3 mate. That's why after knight f3 check, it's almost over, except it isn't. Take, take, and now take. So really, what's happened? Queen for a rook and two bishops, but black has lots of pawns. What a material imbalance, very strange situation. Rook back to f8. Bishop b7, cool move, because white is defending along the diagonal. Queen f6, cool move, because you are attacking both the rook and the pawn. And guess what, in this position, white played such a weird move. It, I mean, what a move, <laughs> incredible. He played rook a, rook d, a2. I mean, why didn't he do that? It's because this bishop and this bishop can now be forked with queen e7. And there's no good way to say both bishops. Why don't you move the bishop back, check, and then you pick it up. 
So after this, rook a2, what a defensive move. Vitashek has to make sure the rook defends the rook, this rook defends the bishop, this bishop is safe because it can block a check. This bishop can come in the game later. What a weird position, what a weird material imbalance. Queen f7, attack the bishop, bishop retreats, and now queen takes pawn. Bishop e3. And after rook d8, you won't believe it, but in this position, all of a sudden, Carlson offered a draw, and White actually took it. Wow. I mean, you look at this position, you feel like there's so much life still left. But if we keep playing, let's see what happens. Because, I mean, why is it a draw? <laughs> Final time, Black had two minutes, and White had six minutes. So let's get a rook back in the game. Let's swap a pair of rooks off. Rook d1 check. Take, take. Bishop f1. And I think white is holding. This rook is going to stop this pawn coming through. Because this bishop can actually come back. These pawns are not getting anywhere anytime soon. So b3. Let's say bishop c1. That's actually such a cool move. Because you can't take because of check. So let's say you give your king some space. And now bishop b2. Fortress. Maybe this is an idea Carlson saw anyway. So he offered a draw. Bishop defends rook, rook defends bishop. If you can't break through on this side of the board, you got to try over here. But white has enough against these two pawns. So maybe it is a draw. King up, rook e3, king up, rook e7, g5, check. Maybe you just put the rook back, rook back to e2. And maybe the truth is there's no way to break through. Also, the final times... It was two minutes to Carlson and six minutes. Ah, that's a that's a big deal as well. It's move 35, so five more moves until move 40. Then they get another half an hour on the clock. So that's another reason to offer a draw. But maybe the truth is White was able to build a fortress anyway. But Carlson didn't feel too confident. Maybe he wasn't on the right side of the draw. So a very, very complex game in the World Cup. And finally, a quick summary of the game. How did Magnus Carlsen play against the Catalan? So we get the Catalan here, and now surprising his opponent. C6, triangle structure. B6, now bishop b7, and this is the move. Knight a6, this is what Carlsen did. If a3, then c5. This is also what I suggest you do in your games if you get this position with black. React with knight a6, c5. Remember, if take, then black can actually take back with the knight. So that's the first step. e5, invite your opponent to get space. Not such a big deal, the knight retreats. Get that tempo, attack the queen, take, and then you've got a lot of entry squares. Really, white is fighting on the light squares. So that's what Carlsen did in this game. Bishop a6, rook c8, black played on the queen side. Kick it back, and here we go. Here's the cool moment, b4, bishop e2, what a move. Carlson needs to go for a pawn break, and he found it. Rook d2, take, take, f6, and then what a mess in this game. What a mess. The complications gave black a winning advantage with knight takes e5, but it fizzled out into this moment. Crazy moment here with this weird material imbalance. Queen had to give itself up for the knight and rook, and then we get this absolutely crazy position. And sometimes in chess, it just fizzles out. Rook d8 offered a draw. And white accepted it. So, that's how Magnus played against the Catalan. Thanks for watching.